Welcome to 3 Minutes Fix. In this video, we will see how to customize Do Movie App Android Side. This is part 2 of the customization tutorial previously posted. So after installing Panel, next step, we will extract the zip file which contains Android Studio files. Once unzipped, you can rename the folder to your app name. Next, copy the folder location, open Android Studio, click Open a Project and then paste the file location. Once done, open the project. In case you're using an older version, you might encounter Gradle compatibility issues. Just update your Android Studio to the latest version. The first thing we'll do is update the package name of your app. In some cases, the package name shows as a single folder, which can confuse people and cause them to get stuck on following the screen. If you see your package name displayed in a single line, simply go to the Settings button and choose Tree Appearance, then uncheck Compact Middle Name Package. This will make Android Studio display your package in separate lines. In case you're confused about why Android Studio looks different, it's because I'm using the old look since I'm not comfortable with the new one. You can also change it from the settings icon above, on the right side of the screen. Next, we will change the package name. I have shown this many times, but still some of us have trouble in doing this. Reason some of us mistakenly change the namespace name. I would not recommend you to change it in case you have very low spec system. If you change it by mistake, then you will end up changing our error manually in entire project Java file. So after changing application ID sync the Gradle. Once done, we will do other changes like app name logo. Next, we need to change the folder names. Click on the folder and select Refactor, then change the name according to the application's ID. If the folder is split into two halves, simply rename the old folder to match the new name. For example, if the old name is Do and the new name is Android and it's split as Do and Android, just change the Do folder to Android. This will merge your folders into one. If you haven't watched the previous video, the link is already in the description. In the previous tutorial, we created a Firebase file. Now it's time to download the file and paste it into our Android app folder. Navigate to your Gradle file, right-click and select Open File Location. Now you're in the app folder. Simply paste the JSON file here. In the same manner, we will also change the name of the third folder. Once this is done, navigate to your strings.xml file, which will be located inside the Values folder. Change the app name to match your desired name. This is a one-time requirement, ensuring that your entire app will read the app name from this location. In this basic customization, we have to change the logo of your splash screen. There are certain errors in the Java file. Just ignore them for now. We will fix it shortly. The developer has created an easy way to dynamically change this splash screen from the admin panel. For the sake of the video, I won't demonstrate it since the changes may take some time depending on network and server response speed. For now, the first image view is the default image view that we can alter as we like. So, I'm going to download a logo from canva.com and paste it into our drawable folder. Next, we'll need to reference that image in the XML file. Once that's done, we have to adjust the size of the images to match the parent screen. This will look amazing. I always recommend using PNG images for better results. To change the app logo, follow these steps. Right-click on the MipMap folder, select New, then Image Asset. In the foreground image, Choose the PNG logo we just downloaded. For the background, black will be suitable since it contrasts with white. Once done, press Finish. 
you can verify whether the logo has been changed by checking the files in the MIPMAP folder. Now, on to the error part. The error here pertains to the liquid page adapter. Simply delete the error and you can manually import it if required. There's also a build config error. For those who've contacted me or followed my tutorials regularly, they know this will only be fixed after rebuilding Android Studio 2 three times. For those with faster PCs, it's not necessary to restart the IDE or the system. Just rebuilding two, three times should suffice. So, I'm going to demonstrate the same in this video. Android Studio is displaying the following error due to a package name mismatch. Simply delete the error message, then right-click on the error at line 15 and choose Import Class. This will import the new package without any issues. I don't think we've generated the build config yet. Let's rebuild one more time. This time, I believe it will generate the file for us. Android Studio successfully generated build config file. So let's go ahead and import that class to our files. Mostly, we have to do it in splash.java and in appupdate.java. In case, Android asked you to add it somewhere else, you can go ahead and import it there also. Once done, let build the app by connecting phone to PC. You can press the play button to start building app. Our app installed successfully. In rare case, app get crashed on splash screen. There may be many reason, but you're sure? Then go to Android Manifest and check if the package name and all the class name are correctly tagged. In your app dashboard, you can dynamically change your logo from the admin panel. To do so, navigate to the settings menu in your admin panel and proceed to the Android settings. In the logo URL placeholder, add your images. It's advisable to recreate the exact size of the default images in Canva as I don't have the specifications with me. As I mentioned earlier, it takes a few minutes for changes to reflect in your Android app. This delay may be due to caching as we store data using shared elements. We'll be exploring other updates while addressing a commonly asked question about OneSignal notifications. Since previous methods are now outdated, I've planned to cover this. To begin, visit the OneSignal by Google website and sign in with your Gmail or email address. If you encounter a blank page, disable your ad blocker. Once logged in, you can create a project. Since I already have one, I'll just select one These are the new changes. OneSignal is asking us to add a JSON file from Firebase. Let's proceed by using the project from where you generated the JSON file. In there, go to Cloud Messaging and check if the API is enabled. Now, navigate to the Service Account tab. Here, choose Node.js as the code option and download the file. Once done, return to your OneSignal dashboard and upload the file. Once uploaded, press Next. All our apps are Android project, 
So, choose Native Android as Target SDK. Once done, press Save and Continue button. We have one last step, which is to add the API key and app ID to your Doe admin panel notification settings. You don't have to do the same in your Android code section since it reads the values directly from the admin panel responses. You can get your API key from the settings of your OneSignal dashboard in the API menu. Once this is done, rebuild the app once. It's not recommended in a live project as the keys and values information is fed directly from the admin panel. Notifications are sent to users when they are away from or outside your app, encouraging them to engage with it. To demonstrate this, I'll quit the app and send a notification from the admin panel. You will receive the notification shortly. If you notice, our app logo is automatically updated to the new one from the dashboard. If you remember, last time we set up some network images while setting up our admin panel. Now that it's live, this network tab will be useful for people to distinguish and watch their favourite movies from their favourite apps. One feature I particularly appreciate in this update is the addition of custom tags. These tags can be set up by administrators in the admin panel, such as HD, UHD and 4K. Users can then choose to watch their favourite movies immediately, or wait until the correct HD print is available in your app. Before proceeding, let's understand how to set up a Google Drive proxy using the Google Drive Index tricks. To do this, navigate to the Google Drive menu. Here, you're supposed to add some data generated by Google. To simplify things, we'll utilise a Google Drive Index URL, which you are already familiar with. Now, simply sign up with your Gmail account and select a folder for this index to be accessed. Once completed, click Generate. Here, you'll find all the required data. All you need to do is copy and paste the relevant data into the correct fields. Once done, click Save. To verify if it's functioning correctly, let's add some Google Drive links to our app and check. I exactly have no idea how this is going to be work. To be on safer side, upload all the files inside the folder that you give access to, G Drive Index Generator, otherwise your video might not play. Your Google Drive video is playing successfully. We're using a proxy mechanism to trick the Google bot so it won't count the hit. I think this is a good fix for the limit error we faced previously. Our custom tag, which I mentioned earlier, is working perfectly. It shows the quality accordingly. However, for me, it shows all qualities with the same name because I have only one custom tag added to my admin panel. The addition of the custom tag on the movie details page is a great improvement. Many people had requested this feature, and although I initially struggled to implement it, it is now available in the app as a new feature by developer.
I hope this edition proves helpful. In this release, we've been introduced with new feature, hiding the URL when using an embedded link. Previously, when people went offline on the embedded page, the URL would become visible to end users. This could lead to various issues. To address this, developer implemented a custom player error and internet checking in this release. Now, when a user turns off the network, an internet error dialog appears, hiding the embedded view. This ensures that people don't have the option to view the URLs. While recording this video, a fan of our channel asked me a question. When we search something in the search view, the soft keyboard doesn't disappear after searching, causing some UI issues. So, I thought it would be helpful to address this issue for our global users. To fix this problem, you need to add a line of code to your search fragment. I've already provided the code in the description of this video. In the XML page, add one line to the autocomplete text view, which is the IME option. This will change the icon of your soft keyboard as per your preference. For search, it's valid to have the search icon as the enter key. Once both changes are made, let's run the app. You can see the icon has changed, but to make Android recognize that this keyboard should be hidden when this particular IME option is pressed, we need to add a listener. Thanks to ChatGPT for the quick help. Now let's paste the code in our search fragment. If your search fragment's view is added as a private declaration, you'll receive an error. To fix that, change the view to a public declaration. Once that's done, you won't face the issue. Let's run the app one more time to see the changes. Our soft keyboard successfully hides after pressing the search button. Users won't need an explanation for why they have to press the search button since the search automatically proceeds upon typing. The reason is that by default, we humans press the search button or enter key even though the search results are displayed. So we can use that to our advantage. Otherwise, we would have to do complex things like when idle, etc. There are numerous additions in this release, which I believe will be greatly helpful for basic guidance. I will also update the survival kit code and share it with the purchasers via Telegram. However, please note that you won't be able to use the Android code without the admin panel. This is to avoid copyright issues and to respect the developer's friendship. Therefore, I cannot share the code publicly. Just a reminder, DAO does not officially support Android TV. However, I recently discovered a workaround that allows you to use the current app on your Android TV. All you need is some money. No, I'm just kidding. All you need to do is add one attribute called focusable with a value of true to all the buttons. Once you do this, you'll notice a shadow effect that enables usability on Android TV. I'll continue to refine this method to ensure full compatibility with Android TV. The user interface on TV is subpar, so it's crucial to optimize it for Android TV. Stay tuned for updates. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video.